it's been a little while since we've made a farm. Should we make a farm? I think we should make a farm. But first, can we just admire the bulk storage room with RTX mode turned on? Uh, we do have our um, shulker boxes going through the system here as well. Still filling in some glass right now, I see. It just looks so awesome with all of the redstone lamps lit up, showing how much stuff we have. Super amazing. A uh, little entryway, like hallway right here looks good. Everything in here looks good. I love the storage room. But I think we can get something else to put in here. It's farm time. Let's go. Project boxes are already packed and guests will not be involved. A couple of things before we get started on the farm and I talk about what it is and what's so amazing about it. Number one, little experiment I wanna do here. Click a like button. Let's see if everybody clicking the like button and having a ton of likes gets the video seen by more people. It's right there below your screen. It's down there, just click it, it's that easy. So what is it that we're gonna be working on today? It's gonna be a guardian farm. Uh, I've teased this a little bit online. This guardian farm is absolutely amazing. It requires zero redstone, zero portals, no advanced technical knowledge at all, no mass clearing out of water or clearing out the temple itself. Really the hardest part here is building it while the guardians shoot at you. Hint, hint, wear a chest armor and protection gear if you have it. It's gonna make your life a lot easier, although we will try to shut down all the spawning spaces as soon as possible. Let's head over to the temple now. Okay, so step number one, find guardian temple, check. Not only check, we actually have two of them. One here and one here. Step number two, clear guardian temples of all elder guardians. If you wanna know how to do that, go back a couple of episodes and watch my episode on clearing an ocean monument. We're a big check on that one too. Step number three, we gotta go over there. And I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a little boat over here. Oh gosh, it's, a, it's on land. Hold on. I'm gonna pick the one that is furthest away from land. If you're playing on a simulation distance four world, like a realm, or you've just set your simulation distance to four, just make sure you're at least 44 blocks away from any type of land. Uh, I have to be a little bit more careful because we, we aren't on a simulation distance four, we're on simulation distance 12 here. So mobs can definitely spawn from a lot further away. Although I, I would kind of like to take a measurement. I wonder if that's more than 128 blocks away, which is how far I have to worry about. It looks like it is. Oh yes, it is much further away. Okay, let me clear this out the way because I'm gonna show you guys how to find your first spawning spot. And once you have the first one, you can easily find all of the others. Now on Bedrock Edition, all of the uh, structure spawns for every structure of that type are always going to be the same. And on Guardian Temples, we wanna look at this center area right here, this square. And we want to actually set a block on the positive X, positive Z side. You see, if I move this way, the X coordinate goes less into the negatives. It means it's actually increasing as the positive direction. And the Z, which is the last set of numbers, is increasing this way. This is my positive, positive block. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, here, let's temporarily mark that with a block of moss. And then we'll build ourselves up here. And actually, I'm going to grab, oh, I forgot to grab something. Hold on. And we are going to mark our first spawning spot on top of this block. So it'll be one level above water right here. And I'm just going to mark it with green to make it easier for you guys to see as we go through and do this. Now, there's going to be a specific grid pattern that we're going to be able to make to find all the spawning locations. I'm going to put a little graph on, on screen for you right now for just a short moment. If you want to look at the graph, just pause at that moment of the video. Otherwise, you can just watch me do it live here on camera. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to face in the positive or plus X direction, which is going to be this way. You can see how the numbers are moving. It is going to the positive as I go this way. And we're going to count out this direction 16 blocks. And to make it easy, I'm going to do this in a checkerboard pattern. So we have 15 blocks and the 16th block is going to be your spawning location. We've just found our second spawn point. We can actually do this in all directions. It's gonna be important though for you to come back in the end here to the positive 
direction for the X because we're going to be working off of that. Okay, and once you have this big uh, like cross-like pattern here, you can actually, and this gives you a total of five spawning spots now, we're gonna connect in the corners and that's just pretty simple to do. You could just go over to the side here and then start working out in this direction until you get to where these two corners would meet. And we're gonna do that on all four sides and we'll end up with a big square with a cross in the middle. Okay, we now have a big box with nine spawning square uh, locations. And you could stop here if you wanted to, but this farm's so easy, there's no need to stop here. Let's do more. We're heading in the positive direction again for X, and it's gonna matter in a moment, the positive direction for the Y, or Z. On the positive X, we're gonna go this way past our number 16 block, and we're gonna go 10 blocks out in this direction and mark another spawning location. And the 10th block is the spawning spot right there. We can also do that on the positive Z side. So we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna go another 10, and the 10th block being our spawning spot. So now we have 16 spawning spot, 10 spawning spot, 16 spawning spot, 10 spawning spot. So that means going this way is actually going to be 11. Same thing for the other direction we have not gone. That way it's going to be 11 on the 11th block. So go ahead and put those in. Okay, I wanted to pillow myself up here to give you one final look. We have 16, 10, 16, 10, positive X, positive Z. Negative Z, 1611, negative X, 1610. We can actually now fill in the rest of the spawning spots because they're gonna form a big square. So there's gonna be another spawning spot about right there where this meets with this, and then where this meets with this, there at that intersection there's gonna be another one. And when we're done, connect them all up, there will be a total of 25 spawning locations. Okay, here's the finished product. So we got the 16s, we got the 10s and 11s laid out. If it confused you at all, just go back and look at the uh, graphic I put on the screen earlier. It, it should be laid out pretty well to make things easy. Now what we need to do though is I probably want to shut down all of these spawn locations. So you're probably going to want to get some form of block that you can use to just set all the way going straight down from where we are here all the way down to the ocean floor. I, I need to go grab some more moss blocks because to me they're the easiest to use. So I'm gonna go get those. All right, this is really gonna be one of the hardest parts for you guys. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fly over here and I'm gonna switch to my chest plate. We're gonna get blasted a little bit. So just be careful when you're doing this part, but this is what I mean. Just take these blocks and run them all the way down until you reach some form of ground and then just repeat this process for every location and then what you can do is you can fly away or swim away to where all of the mobs unspawn or despawn and from that point you should be able to come back and no more guardians will be messing with you while you do these next parts okay all of the spots have been covered and i think technically speaking these guys they will they will spawn down like below inside of the temple but that shouldn't really be much of a problem what we need to now worry about or do is we're going to uh, fly away to make everything here despawn and we're going to come back and just take a little look around and see if we have any guardians spawning if they are we put stuff in the wrong spot if we're not then we know that we're good to go okay i feel confident enough to say that we got this thing right i've been sitting here for like five minutes and have not seen the first guardian spawn that means we have gotten the correct locations and we have effectively blocked all guardian spawning next thing we need to do is we need to get a bunch i'm gonna use glass you don't have to use glass it's gonna make it's that's a lot funner use glass just just do it just because it's more fun but i need to get a lot of glass and we need to get our shovel and pickaxe out we got to do a little bit not a lot a little bit of digging okay now pick any spawning location that you plan on using to make things easy for myself for display purposes i'm going to pick one that's on the outer edges because it'll be easier for you guys to see what we're going to be doing let's grab this one right here so first of all we are going to be leaving this block right here because that's actually going to make all of our guardians that spawn in a cave spawn instead of a surface spawn without getting too deep into the weeds here what that's going to mean is you are not going to need to get rid of or spawn proof for any 
of the drowned that are going to have the ability to spawn in the area because drowned only spawn on the surface they do not spawn in caves also below where your ocean monument is there should only be waterlogged caves there should not be any caves that have open air to them meaning that you won't have normal mob spawns to fight with either now this may very well change in 1.18 so to future proof yourself this is what you're going to need to do with the farm okay you're going to need to either spawn proof the whole surface area light it up put buttons down something like that anywhere within the spawnable radius of your particular game world if that's a realm it's only four chunks which is 44 blocks if you play on a higher simulation distance it, it may be a higher amount so you'll have to either do that or um, you will have to go and light up all of your caves down below if there are caves that are not waterlogged i'm not familiar enough with 1.18 yet to know if the caves below oceans will or will not be waterlogged so if they aren't you're going to need to light up the caves if you want to keep the mobs as cave spawns if you're going to change them over to surface spawns and, and spawn proof the surface you can get rid of this top block you won't need it okay i'm going to mark a special block here we're going to go from where our top block is we're going to go down one two and three and we're going to count from this block right here we can actually for now we can get rid of these two blocks we're going to put them back in so we don't get spawns on us but we are on y level 61 right now what we want to do is we want to go down 33 blocks from that spot straight down so we want to be standing on doing math we want to be standing at y level 28 so let's go once you get down to y level 28 you're going to want to clear out all the blocks within a square area of that spot. So basically where I have these glass blocks all the way up. Remember, you're directly under your spawning location. Clear out all of the all of the blocks in that area and replace them with glass. Or if you don't want to see things, that's fine. You can just simply fill in like this. I like to see stuff, though, so I think I'm going to clear it all out. Next thing we need to do is remove all water sources out of here. So I'm just going to, I guess, pop in right here. And all of this is water. So to remove the water sources, we're just gonna go through and put in some solid blocks. Take all the blocks out. Let's take all these blocks out too. I'm, I'm probably gonna fall and it's gonna hurt. And then let's cover this in. And what we should have now is no water anywhere to be found in here. And I took that block out temporarily so we can put that back. Yes, no water, awesome. Okay, next what you're gonna need is a button. You're gonna go down one underwater, two underwater, go down to the third underwater spot and knock that block out just temporarily so you can take a button and put it right there. Place that glass back, not right there, right there. And then do yourself a favor, go up here and then you need to go ahead and place down a water source right here and a water source right there. Now you can close that back up. And what you should have is water, water, button, and then a big old drop down. So before I can continue, I have a bit of a problem. And this right here is the problem. A mine shaft happens to be underneath this guardian temple. So I can either pick a different guardian temple I hope there's no mine shaft under that or I can go through and light the entire mine shaft up uh, this is not gonna be fun all right that problem has been solved there is actually a fair amount of mine shafts under there but I did go through and get them all lit up and then what we did with the first tube I did that 24 more times and this is what we have that's <laughs> awesome if I stand here for a little bit you should see guardians dropping in and some of them are probably dropping in far enough away to where I can't see them really well. Although there is like a weird graphics glitch that happens when like you see them drop in and those further ones see they like shoot up in the air. It's just a graphics glitch. They're not actually shooting up in the air. But let's take a closer look. So this is the first tube that we did. And again, we have the button and the third slot and then two water spaces above it. Um, what's happening is the guardians think that they can spawn on top of that button They actually are seeing it as a spawnable block to spawn on top of not inside of they're not spawning here They're spawning right here and then when they spawn in they instantly drop down out of the water 
and fall to their death. And this is happening 25 different locations and we can have a total of eight mobs alive on this cave cap at the same time. Remember we put these here. So we have a cave cap because we have the drowned that are spawning in all sorts of different areas over here. I don't know that I see any right now. Yep. There's one right there. So we didn't want to use the surface cap. Now, um, when I was making these, I kind of got like a pretty good rhythm down. Basically what you want to do, you need to drop these guys a total of 33 blocks down from this block right here. So you want to go down 33 from there. So basically what I did was I, I calculated what that number was. In my case, I went down to 26 and then I dug the middle all the way down and then filled the whole pillar in. Also remember whenever you're doing this, if you're not gonna use like all 25 locations, that's fine. You need to have that pillar of blocks that you saw that we had earlier going all the way down. Otherwise you're gonna have the guardians spawn in. So just remember to do that. And then what I did was I put the glass or you could do your border block. If you're going to have some type of border block, it's not see-through glass like I did. And I just took that up on all the sides. And then I stood on that little middle block area that we had. And I just chopped away on down it, put in my button, put in the two water sources up top. And that was it. But now we need to have a way to collect our drops. So if you want to make this redstone list, make it as quick, easy, and simple as it can possibly be. Because right now, doing all 25 tubes, it took a little bit of time. Like we're talking about a couple hours worth of work, like just getting all the tubes set up and laid in and all that kind of thing. If you're only doing nine, you could probably do this whole thing in an hour. Nine being like the middle, middle nine, none of the outside bordering area. But if you really want to keep this a short, easy project, you can do this entire thing with absolutely no redstone. So super easy. All we got to do is we got to pop ourselves a little hole in here. We're going to set a chest right there. Pop ourselves a little hole right here so we can see. Pop that out. Put a hopper facing right there. And then we just need to do that for every single spot where we're gonna have a guardian dropping. And then all of your drops will go inside of this chest, just like that. His drops, there, oh gosh. His drops are in here now. He dropped, dropped a couple of cod and some of the other stuff too. So that's all you gotta do, and that's it. You can call the farm done if you want to. And if you were to call it done here, honestly, this is like, I'm so excited about this farm. This is like one of the best farm. This might be the best guardian farm out there. Yes, I know you can get them a little bit faster if you push them off to the nether, and you set up a trident killer on that side or maybe you don't do a trident killer and you throw like potions at them or something i've seen those farms i get it those do have a purpose i like this a lot better i can afk it it requires no interaction whatsoever it's simple i can put it together really quick and it doesn't require any redstone nice and easy and as you can see it's actually pretty quick i'm sure some of you out there will modify this and make it so you could use a trident killer that's really cool. You could do it. It's going to slow down your rates a bit though, because then you're wasting time moving all the mobs in to the trident killer area. So really, I think dropping them is actually the fastest way to do it. But if you have a different experience with that, drop me down a comment and let me know. But me, I'm not going that route. We're going to do something a little bit different. Although I would like to start capturing these drops while they are, I guess like while I'm working on the area. So we're going to make ourselves a conduit first. That way we can breathe underwater. So let's go get the stuff for that. And to make one of those, we need some Nautilus shells of which I have plenty over here at the drown farm. And we need to open up a treasure map and find where the treasure is. And the funny thing is, according to this map, this treasure is right here by my guardian farm. I don't remember if I've gotten this already or not. Actually, it kind of looks like I maybe did. Is there a chest down here? No. Okay, let's dig up oh, and we found it because when you get a buried treasure map, which you can get from pirate ships, like those guys over there, sunken ships, and you look inside, you will find this, the heart of the sea and other goodies too. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Um, and we can now take this and we can craft this into a conduit. Now we have a conduit. 
now we could take our prismarine and we could build a little structure around it and that will allow us to infinitely breathe underwater see better underwater and mine faster underwater it's kind of like a beacon for the water so let's do it and there is what a full conduit looks like you surround it with prismarine any prismarine blocks will work in this type of fashion and it will give you the conduit power effect and now not only will we have the conduit power effect we'll have the haste to effect here as well so it's time for me to start a live stream because we are going to actually do some heavy modification here for what i want to do remember you guys if you want to keep it simple hopper and chest underneath each one and i am going to do that for a while I do everything else but i have a bigger plan here and i don't know how far i'm going to go with it yet but what i want to do is that actually i want to clear out everything on the inside of this guardian temple so i'm going to take out every single block on the inside and then also i need to afk 25 blocks below the spawning locations here because i want mobs to be able to spawn in any of the tubes no matter where i'm walking around in here and that actually means we have to go down to this level right here so we actually we have to drop the whole floor down and like reconfigure this whole temple in a way we need to stretch the whole thing downwards so we're gonna empty it out first and then we're gonna stretch it down and we're gonna see how it looks i have a feeling it's gonna be pretty awesome okay so i've actually done a ton of work down below and i'm going to show you that here in just a moment um, but what i ended up doing was uh, like i told you guys you could just do the chest and the hopper thing if you want to keep things simple but i actually went a lot further than that and i actually tethered or tied all these together with hoppers so at that same level where you saw me putting the hopper and chest down before i actually connected big rows of hoppers coming all the way down through here through here uh, and then all of these and I grouped them together in two different batches You'll actually see that that down below when we go down there So half of the farm goes into one set of hoppers half of the farm goes into another set of hoppers And we ran that through a standard item filter just like I've used in a lot of farms in the past So again, if you want to see the item filters Then go check out some of my previous videos where I have done those and I even have an episode dedicated to it It's the exact same filter system but as we go down in here, you're about to see something really crazy because I really like took this to the next level in terms of like what my ultimate plan was. And I can't wait to describe it to you guys. And here's the temple. Not only did we clear it out, we took out all the water. There's no water left in here. And I figured out something really cool to do with stream that works. I was in stream a little bit earlier today and I, I had this an idea and I wanted to try it out is that the guardians that fall down they will actually free fall through here without a tube because we have a tube up there that kind of like lines them up and keeps them straight and then they continue on down there and they they still hit the ground and they die look did you see him let's see let's watch look there's another one and yeah they just kind of free fall through here and i thought that was really cool and i have plans that i'm going to talk about a little bit later when it comes to that i just had these little glass pieces on the bottom now to keep myself from falling into tubes but here's what we did over here look so you can see actually the system was backed up when i got everything hooked up not long ago and it's still kicking items up and out but it's actually sending items up a water stream um, from down below half of the farm and it's coming in through here to get filtered into all of these different chests that i have here um, and then where is it and there's the crystals and I'm even keeping the raw cod and then the same thing for over here, too um, As you can see the items are still coming up and filtering in because this farm is actually so fast one single set of hoppers uh, Filter like it can't keep up so we needed to have two of them and I'm hoping two of them will keep up if not I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I really don't know what I'm gonna do I don't know if I can fix the problem if it doesn't uh, but in any event, I thought it'd be really cool to see the items kind of flowing up and into the system. And then over here, for any time we get overflow, there's a little trash can set up to where the items will get shot down and burn up there for any sort of overflow. And then that's where we really get into what's going to come next with this. Because I could just leave it like this, right? I do need to get back to work on the main base. But I thought we could maybe take advantage of RTX in here. And I think we're gonna do that in the next episode, right? Because if I hit if I hit RTX mode on right now, it's it actually it doesn't light up that bad, honestly. I guess the the light like reflects off the prismarine pretty good. 
but still it doesn't look very impressive right we just got a bunch of torch spam so i was thinking that we may do an episode on exactly how to do oh oh no oh no this will not stand yeah i thought we could do an episode on how to light things up in rtx mode and really showcase what RTX lighting can do. Because a lot of people really just think of RTX as shaders. And it's capable of things that shaders cannot exactly do. Although shaders are really nice and can actually do some things that RTX can't really do yet too. So it goes both ways. But we're going to actually decorate this place out some. And then work with RTX lighting to really give this place a cool look. So you need to stay, uh, uh, keep a lookout. So you need to keep a lookout for that in the next episode, and I would definitely appreciate it if you guys do, because, yeah, the building episodes, I know a lot of people don't really like those so much, but, I mean, they're, they're part of running a series, and they're part of making a really cool world, and I also just want to encourage people to build, too. So we'll be doing a lot of building tips and tricks and just looking at things just normally in the game without RTX, and we won't have RTX on while we do a lot of the building. But what we will be doing is switching back and forth with the RTX off and on to see a lot of the cool lighting effects. And I actually have some really cool plans, including with these little guys right here, including with some of the things over here, and including with this, which I'm actually going to move and, and maybe have a couple of them. And I think it'll look really cool for the way that we end up like making this place work out. So if you did enjoy this video, can you click the like button? No, seriously, click the like button. Um, the like button helps out the video ever so much and I'd like to see how many likes can we get in the video if you're still watching right now go down below click the like button give a little thumbs up and if you're not subscribed to the channel already please hit the subscribe button to see this to see more bedrock guide episodes as well as other videos that I come out with including snapshot and beta updates and uh, parody like comparisons and all sorts of great things so again thank you all so much and I'll see you in the next episode because you're going to be there and you're going to watch it. Bye!